Well, hello, avid readers of Christian fiction. I am so excited to have Misty M. Beller here today. We're talking about one of her new books. She just has books coming out all the time. So I will say one of her new books, um, Grace on the Mountain Trail, which I'm almost done with. I'm enjoying it so much. But welcome, Misty. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. It's exciting to um, spend some time with the avid group. I'm always scrolling through the posts and um, I just don't get to interact as much as I'd like to, but it's so much fun to hang out with everyone. I'm finding so many books that I'm like buying and reading and it's such a great group. And I mean, I discovered you through the group, so I'm super excited about that. And I'm excited to talk about your new book. Um, but before we do, for those maybe that didn't catch your last video or maybe you're new to them, just start by telling a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I have a cold right now. So if my voice is extra deep, that's why. <laughs> um, you got your radio voice on today. <laughs> yes, exactly. The deep one. Um, so I write Christian historical romance. Um, my books are almost all set in the Rocky Mountains, um, usually in the 1800s, um, somewhere between 1810 and 1880. Um, very much frontier uh, mountain men and um, usually strong heroines and strong heroes. Um, I Grace on the Mountain Trail, I believe, is my thirty-second book. That is awesome. Um, the so, cover is beautiful. Oh, I love how that cover turned yeah. out. Um, this has been a really neat series to write. Um, this is book eight in the series. Although each one is a standalone, you don't have to have read the earlier books to to enjoy. Although if you have read the earlier books, you get to see a lot of fun characters um, that you've met in past books. Um, but I have that series releasing and then I also write for Bethany House. Um, so I'm in the middle of a, a fun um, series with Bethany House set in the Canadian Rockies. Yes. So all my books are set there in the mountains. Um, they usually have snow. Um, although every now and then we'll have a summer book, but. Um, yeah. I just love that setting. I'm a mountain girl for sure. Um, I'm a wife and a mom of five. My oldest um, just turned 15, just got her driver's permit. So wow. <laughs> that's the fun in our house. My youngest is um, eight months old. So that's me in a nutshell. Eight months already? Like it doesn't yes. seem that long since I talked to you. <laughs> yes, I know. In fact, I've been saying she's seven months for a while now and someone corrected me yesterday, actually. Yeah. So, so that's pretty busy. Fast. Eight months to 15. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's you're like covering every, enjoying every age lots. at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Potty training and driver training. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Anyway. Okay. So let's talk about Grace on the Mountain Trail. And I would just love for you to share the characters. First of all, Lola is so fun and it's, I know that area. Um, so Lolo pass, um, we lived yes. in Montana and I'll call us up. I'm like, oh, yes, I know what they're yes, talking about. Yes. Like, I know that I remember that. Yeah. Oh, well this series, um, I originally started it, um, book one, um, the characters were retracing the steps of the Lewis and Clark expedition. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of from great falls, Montana, um, all the way, um, through Lolo Pass, or over Lolo Pass, rather, yes. um, and into Idaho. Um, so this entire series um, has has kind of branched from through that area. Um, and this particular book in this series, um, Lola uh, Carson is her name. Um, she has come west to find the half-brother um, that she didn't realize that she had um, when her father died. He told yeah. her about this, this son that... Um, that he'd kind of broken off ties from, um, but he wanted to give him um, a large inheritance. Um, so she's set off west with a couple family friends. Um, and as soon as they reach the Rockies, um, they stumble upon this brave, um, this Indian brave. And that's is, like the first, the first <laughs> sentence is a body lay sprawled beside the boulder. Like if you don't get pulled in to a brick, a body lay sprawled beside the boulder. I don't know what could pull you in. To the brick. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of a shock for her, um, especially yeah. when she realized he's not dead yet, but he might be very soon if, yes. if she doesn't do something to help. Um, and um, so that Indian brave ends up being our hero in the book. Um, he's a Shoshone warrior. 
um, who we actually, he played a pretty significant minor role um, in the previous book in the series. Oh, okay, so, so this is the first that I read in the series. So that's cool that he was in there. Yeah. Yeah, he was um, he was the third in the love triangle in the last book, and he did oh. not get the girl in that book. Um, but I realized, oh, you know what? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. I, re I realized in that book he was not the bad guy. He was actually a pretty good guy, so he needed his own story. Yes. And I love how this book turned out. Yes. I just really fell in love with him. Um, he's a good guy. He he's is a, really a good, good guy. guy, and he's... Um, I mean, in that time period, often they weren't seen as good guys. So explain ex who he is, like we're talking about, but explain who he is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, he's a Shoshone warrior. Um, there's some missionaries that came to his village the summer before. Um, and he was not initially open to the gospel, mm -hmm. um, but he had kind of a, a real face-to-face -face encounter, um, with God where God really stepped in and saved him. Um, saved his life physically, and then White Owl gave his life um, to the white man's God. They I love back it. Then. I have an eyelash on um, my eyes. If I keep wiping my eye, I'm like... <laughs> I know, it's such a sad story. No. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm so sad um, that, that the book started with this body laying there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so White Owl has been a Christian for about a year, um, but he's just really eager to soak in um, as much as he can of this new Okay, case. keep talking because yeah. I need to go get a Kleenex real quick. Yes, my, 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 yes. Just keep talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So um, so in this book, um, White Owl is actually, he's left his village um, because he didn't get the girl and he kind of needed some time away. Um, but he is headed out to find the missionaries um, who helped um, lead him to the Lord. And um he's so he's gone to search for them they had asked him if he would be an interpreter for them um initially he said no but now he's he's feeling led that this is where he needs to go okay. um but I along the way he a... <laughs> oh good good uh, if that doesn't do it yeah i know do what you need to do oh so. So, but then he has a hunting accident and um, turns out to be, uh, it festers pretty badly, gets pretty infected. Um, and that's where Lola finds him. And yeah, and Lola finds him. And like you said, she's on her mission and they have like this, um, we won't give too much away, but the, the snow's coming. There's a pass across, which we've crossed that pass in a vehicle. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Yes. And it's and not it's, nothing to mess with. I can't imagine. <laughs> like you talk about the, the elements and that the, they show up in the book. Um, it's nothing to mess with. When, when you talk about that time period, I don't even know how people did it back then. I don't either. It's amazing. Um, I've read the journals of Lewis and Clark um, mm -hmm. so many times now. I actually have the audiobook. It's a 19 hour audiobook, just the abridged version. Yeah. Um, but it is amazing to hear their description of uh, crossing those mountains, first going and then coming back, um, and how long it took them and how hard it was. And um, it, it just, I can't even imagine doing it. Um, they they just about didn't survive both, yeah. both directions. And so. so many people, I mean, just crossing those mountains. And, um, and then what I love is that you have the Shoshone, and then you have Lola, um, and it was just the, the care and compassion. I don't know. It just, there was just such, and I love that the title is grace on the mountain trail. Cause there's so much on both sides, just care and grace. And was it hard? Um, cause I, you know, there's so many people talking about like, we shouldn't write about characters if we don't have that background and that sort of thing. I mean, wasn't it hard for you to like, were you worried like, um, I don't know if are people going to get mad because I just fell in love with the characters, but I'm just curious, like I know as a writer, it's, we're always so cautious about that. Yeah. Um, I, I do try very hard to be careful with that. Um, mm -hmm. I've written so many frontier books, written about so many of the tribes out there and I've done so much research. I've read, um, lots of firsthand accounts, lots of journals of trappers, mm -hmm. um, and journals of, um, a few native American, um, stories. Uh, or, you know, autobiographies, basically. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the journals of Lewis and Clark are, are just packed full of information. Um, but I've also done some courses like Sarah Elizabeth Sawyer um, is a Choctaw Indian. 
um, who has put together a really good course for fiction writers um, that just talks about writing Native American characters yeah. and um, some of the pitfalls to watch out for and um, just uh, that that was really helpful. So I've worked so hard to do my due diligence. Um, and I wanted, that's why I asked the question because I wanted you to explain that. Like that, because I yeah. know with all your books, you put care into it. You really know the time period. It's not like you just sat down like, I'm just going to write this today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's make this guy. Let's just though. make this, yeah. No, I, and to me, and I've actually probably used this line some in my books, but to me, um, it, I really struggle when people um, stereotype an entire group of people. Yeah. So not just the whites are the bad guys and the Indians the good guys or vice versa, or even that there are specific tribes that are the bad guys. Right. Um, there's, you know, that people are individuals and um, we can choose to um, follow the Lord's leading and um, do the right thing and um, act ethically and morally, or we can choose not to. Um, and that's an individual choice. Um, and sometimes culture plays into that. Oftentimes, um, when I'm reading about different um, groups of Indians, um, there are specific bands that were either um, looked favorably on the white people, um, interacted well, um, you know, looked towards them as friends, um, all that good stuff. So it wasn't just a, a big tribe was this way or Absolutely, that way. Absolutely, yes. And so I, I love that. And so Living up in Montana, I was um, I met the granddaughter of Frank Bird Linderman, who wrote oh. a lot of uh, he would he would go into and live among um, different tribes and like write their folklore and stories and stuff. I've been able to be on his cabin in Flathead Lake and see like his original type manuscripts. And I know like he was a white man that went and lived among yes. many different tribes, like even tribes that didn't even like each other. <laughs> he was able yes. to live among many different tribes and I love and then in your book you had White Owl had been influenced by this missionary and I know that there so I love that you're exploring these parts of history that often I mean you like you said it seems like it's black and white or things were this way or there this was the evil tribe or whatever and it wasn't like that there was just, just human people like having yeah. their thoughts and ideas and interacting with missionaries and interacting like Frank Bird Linderman um, and telling him their stories. And so I love that you're able through this book and then others that you've written, able to really explore that and that, that yes, it's fictional, but this, these types of interactions and relationships were very real on the Western frontier. Yes, yes. Especially, I love the time period that this series is set in, in the 1830s, because it really was um, so frontier back mm -hmm. then. There were um, almost no forts built in the West at that point, or, you know, in the Montana Territory area, um, which it wasn't Montana Territory at that point. Yeah, it was and I love, I love it territory. so that it said future Montana Territory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so there, there really wasn't even the bad guy, good guy thought back then. It was just, you know, we're all trying to survive out here in the wilderness, um, in this gorgeous mountain wilderness. Um, the setting there is just amazing. Yes. Um, it's very challenging, but it's just breathtaking scenery. So, yeah. Yeah. And I love like that Lola, I mean, she never even planned for this to be her life either. She has to go and find her brother. And so, you know, there's definitely people that would go like as they want to hunt or they want to, you know, explore, or they, you know, want to um, you know, do training or whatever. Um, but she is in this foreign <laughs> wilderness with the help of friends. We'll call them friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then, but this is not what like she planned to do for her life. But it's a big enough, like her, like you said, her inheritance. And that, that's right in the first chapter. So that's or maybe right. No spoiler. Not giving too much away um, <laughs> is at stake, and so I love like she has some, something at stake, and stopping to help him is putting that at risk, and he has a lot of stake in helping her. Like it's just I love books where you just have the competing motivations and goals, but then I well I don't want to give too much away. It works out somehow. It works out. You know, in all all my <laughs> books, it all works out. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I just uh, one of the things I loved in this book too is, um, you know, White Owl brings that thirst for for God and and the the things of God, um, and he's really working to you know to 
follow God's leading, although he really knows so little of yeah. his faith. Um, he just has such small knowledge. Um, and Lola comes from a background. She, you know, she was raised in church, um, but she really, um, her relationship is, is not strong. She's, um, you know, she's um, religious, but she's, mm -hmm. she's not so much a believer. Um, so the two of them come from those very unlikely opposites, um, even in their faith. And um, it's, it's really fun to see how they impact each other through the story. We'll just hit um, grace is in the title of the book. So <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, okay. yeah. so let's talk about the other books in the series. Um, so, and they're all, um, let's see where that, where's the list? I just saw the list a minute ago. They all have mountain in them. Unless, can, oh wait, here we go. Um, yep. So freedom in the mountain wind, hope in the mountain river, light in the mountain sky, courage, in the mountain wilderness, faith in the mountain valley, honor in the mountain refuge, peace in the mountain haven, grace on the mountain trail, and calm in the mountain storm. So there are nine books in the series. Are you planning to write more or? There will be 10. Um, there might even be 11. I've kind of um, yeah. written myself into a corner. Um, <laughs> there's one more character who I had not planned to tell his story, but I think I'm going to have to. You know, but then when you tell the story, there's going to be another character that's going to show up. <laughs> I know. That's I know. Man, on their own story, too. <laughs> so, I guess I'll maybe ask my readers at that point, um, what do you guys think? Should we call it quits or do you want to hear the next one? Oh, you know what they're going to uh, say, though. <laughs> they're going to say they wouldn't hear the next one. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, Probably so. I'll probably feel the same way. So. Yeah. So the next book in this series, um, it's actually one that I'm, I'm writing the end of it now. Oh, um, nice. It's um, one of the missionaries. It's her book. Oh, um, wow. So um, I will give you a spoiler. White Owl does eventually catch up with the missionaries, but you'll yeah. have to find out how and, and who might be with him at the time. That's awesome. So I know there's missionaries in St. Ignatius, and I wonder, but I think that might have been later than what you're writing about. Yeah. So. So let me tell you a really neat true story. Yes. Um, there back in, I want to say it was the 20s, 1820s, or it might have even been the 18 teens. Um, but uh, these four um, Indians showed up in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. um, I think two of them were Shoshone and two of them, no, I'm sorry, they were Nez Perce and Flathead. Two Nez Perce, two Flathead, I believe. Anyway, they just appeared in St. Louis. And no Native Americans had come east at all before that point. Wow. Um, so they just, just showed up and um, they spoke to actually um, Clark from the Lewis and Clark expedition. He was um, head of Indian relations and stationed in St. Louis at that point. Um, and so he spoke with them. Of course, he spoke their language. Um, and they had come because they wanted to learn more about the white man's God. Um, which I think that what? is so neat. That really happened, you guys. That is, I, I love that story. Um, they had heard of, of the scriptures from the Lewis and Clark expedition that came through. Um, and um, they, they felt like that um, the white man's God was who gave the white man riches. Um, and mm -hmm. so they just wanted to learn more about this. So um, at that point, there was kind of a... I won't say a flurry of missionaries going West, but there were a number of groups of missionaries that went West at that point. Um, so that's kind of the, um, the impetus for the fictional missionaries in that this series. That is so cool. That is, yeah. I've never heard that story before. That's amazing. I haven't, I, I was just love that and it stuck with me and it's I'm just so neat. Yeah. I, I love that so much. Okay, cool. Okay. Right, so tell us, um, Pick a book, pick one of the other books. You could pick the one that's after this or before this or share maybe in one of the other, like the premise of the book so that you give the, the viewers an idea of the types of books in the series. Yeah, okay. You're like, which one do I pick? I know. <laughs> um, so, oh, all right. So let me tell you how this series got started. Okay, that'll, that'll be, be fun. Um, so the first book in the series, Freedom in the Mountain Wind, um, I'm, the heroine in that series um, is traveling with her father, um, and it's her father's um, 
big wish in his life is to kind of travel the the path that Lewis and Clark took. Okay. Um, and they kind of knew that he was dying, um, but he, so the heroine made this happen for her father. Um, the hero in that book um, is one of a group of five guys. Um, he's actually Native American as well. Um, he's half Blackfoot, half English, but was raised. One is um, kind of Southern country of the U.S. <laughs> and one is French Canadian. Um, but they're traveling together. They kind of um, found each other along the way west. Um, and so they're they're on the search for one of the, Sp the brothers from Spain. Mm -hmm. um, and so then they stumble upon the heroine and her father and um, that that book is, is really neat. I won't give the full synopsis yeah. of that book, but if you've not read Freedom in the Mountain Wind, that's a really fun one. Um, so each of the next books um, takes the story of one of those guys, the five kind of band oh. of brothers. Um, and that, oh, I just fell in love with them. There's Beaver Tail is the, the Blackfoot. Um, Joel and Adam are the, the brothers from Spain. And Caleb is... Um, Caleb ends up being very important in this book as well, Grace on yeah. the Mountain Trail. Yeah. Um, but he's just, he's a former minister and he's just tall, super tall and just easy going. And one of those guys that you just cannot not like. Um, and then French, of course, is, is the French Canadian. Um, but it was so neat to give each, to find out what happens in each of their stories um, and the women they uh, meet along the way. Um, I, I will say I'm I'm not afraid to to mix races to yeah. to match the Native Americans and um, the whites um, well, or vice versa. That was versa. very common too. <laughs> yeah, it really was because that's it the really way things was. happened back then. Yes, um, it was extremely common for a white man and a um, Native American woman. Um, it was kind of rare to have a, a white female out there. Um, but we have a couple of those in my books, like yeah. Lola in like Grace on Lola. the Mountain Trail. Like Lola. Yep. She had a good reason to be there. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, of course, there's lots of kids that um, slip into the stories. Um, for example, I'll give you Caleb's story. Um, he and the rest of the guys, um, that band of brothers, um, and the women that they've married along the way, um, are traveling back across the mountains. So they're coming east um, from Idaho across into Montana, or what became Idaho what into became, what became yeah. Montana. <laughs> it was just wilderness back um, then. Yeah, they're, they're crossing the Lillard Pass. Um, and um, they are going to um, find one of the chief's daughters um, to earn something back for him. Um, and they are taking along one of the Native American women and her two-year-old son, um, who's the cousin of the chief's mm -hmm. daughter they're trying to, to find. And um, there's, there's backstory, the reasons why they're doing all this, but yeah. it's um, very interesting in that book, um, traveling with a two-year-old boy um, day after day on horseback and um, heading into the mountain territory and all the, um, all the stuff a toddler can get into. Um, can you just mountains. imagine, like, we're thinking of road trips and car seats and how hard <laughs> yes. it is. Yes. Contain that little guy. And they and, have you know, backboards. What are they called? Are they backboards or what are the? Um, yeah, cradle boards, yeah. Cradle boards, yeah. Um, so he was growing out of his cradle board. So his mama tried to strap him in that cradle board the first day, and um, it didn't go so well. So, <laughs> of course, Caleb, our hero, um, was the good guy he is um he took the little boy um into his saddle and helped entertain him and teach him some english words and oh, you awesome. know, just try to try to help mama a little bit i love that um, so oh, which, which book is that one that one is courage in the mountain wilderness okay um, book four okay so i love it so i love that you were able you've just been carrying these characters like we're gonna we're gonna explore each of their stories and then like why Al for this one he was in the last book so I love and I think that's so fun because often we're like well what about this other character what's gonna happen with them and you're like well there's a book for that <laughs> yes that's exactly um, this book or this series um, I I had the concept for the fi first five books you know the the five guys in the group um, and I really wasn't sure early on what was gonna happen after that is it gonna 
end at that point or what's going to happen. Um, but I'm very much, a, I get attached to these characters and I just um, I am intrigued by them and want to know what their story is. Um, so it's fun. It's, it's amazing how they become um, so close to real life people. And, yeah. <laughs> in our minds. And I love how you said, I'm curious what their story is like. I mean, are you like me, like in the middle of the night, like, oh, I can do that or in the shower or like we hear these little things and all of a sudden we have the idea there. Is that yes. just they pop in your head and tell you yes. what they want to be? I'll be listening to a song and suddenly I'll realize, oh, wow, that's the way he felt. That's exactly. Yeah. So the characters are definitely where it all starts for me. The character first, and then the story eventually comes. So. I love that. I love that. All right. So you you said there you ten for sure, maybe eleven. I don't know. Next time I talk to you, it might be like I'm on book fifteen now. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. And then for those who don't know, let's talk. Just tell us you know, an overview of some of your other um, series because I know you mentioned the. Um, ones that you're doing for Bethany House, and then you have some other ones. So, just generally, because I know once once you start reading Missy's books, there's a lot of a lot of them you can follow. Yeah. So this series, of course, is called The Rockies, um, and then another series that's a lot of fun. It's kind of a reader favorite. Is the Mountain series. Um, book one in that one is The Lady and the Mountain Man. Mm. Um, so that's kind of a um, a mail order bride story um, oh. that, with the twist so and of course it's it's the mountain setting um, in a remote log cabin and there might be some snowed in scenes and, um, <laughs> you're like let's use the snow to our advantage in <laughs> almost every book <laughs> you know that book was one of my early ones but it's the one where I really realized I love writing Rocky Mountain stories and I want them to be remote and this is kind of my favorite um, and readers that is so cool. liked it as well so. yeah so the mountain series um and then um from bethany house i have um i can't remember the series names oh i'm looking right here parts of montana so the brides of laurent yeah the brides of laurent is the one set in um the canadian rockies um book two just released in that one um and so book three released Thomas? in november Yes, A Healer's okay. Promise. That one is a really fun series, you guys. Um, it's set in um, a village, a hidden village um, that lives in caves in the Canadian Rockies. And they've been completely cut off from civilization for 100 years. Yeah. So, um, and they're, of course, becoming exposed to civilization in these books. So yeah. Good stuff. And then Hearts of Montana. That's the one I was trying to think of. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was the first series I did with Bethany House. And um, that one, I love that one. It's kind of a cross between a, a frontier series and a Western series. Um, but it definitely has those um, strong mountain men. And um, uh, just, it's, I really enjoyed that. So Hope's awesome. Highest Mountain is the first book in that yes, series. Yes, Hope's Highest Mountain, Loves Mountain Quest, and Faith's Mountain Home. Um, you have a lot of mountains in your titles. I'm seeing. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> just, okay, then, just in case readers were confused where yeah. my settings are. Yeah. And then the Texas Rancher trilogy. That is the one series that is not set in the Rocky Mountains. Um, wow. That one's set down in Texas. But Texas um, is pretty cool. I mean. Yeah, it is. It is. The hill country near Seguin. Yeah. And then uh, um, Wyoming Mountain Tales. Mm -hmm. And then um, the Mountain and Series. Yeah, the Wyoming Mountain Tales. Actually, you can get book one of that, the ebook, um, for free if, if when you sign up for my newsletter. On oh, my I website. saw that today on your website. Yeah. A Pony yeah. Truth Romance. Yes, yes. Um, the website is mistymbeller.com. That's so. awesome. Yep. So if you go there and it's right when, because I was looking to see how many books were in the series, because um, I'm like, <laughs> well, and then you're like, it's in the back of the book. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but when I pop, when I went to the website, I'm like, oh, cool free book when you sign up for the newsletter. So that's great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then the mountain series has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. 10, 11, 12. Uh -huh. 12 yeah. books. That's awesome. Yeah. That one, um, that one is such a fun series. And like I said, that one's kind of a reader favorite, um, the entire series. I just kept going because there were characters to write. <laughs> Okay. And the, the last book is kind of a reunion of all the characters. Of course, it has this, this storyline, but 
Yes. Oh, yes. very cool. Um, so, and if, which I know you, Tricia, um, have an adoptive family. Um, yeah. My younger brother and sister were adopted. So a couple of those books have a strong um, adoption Ooh. theme to them. Um, I, I won't give spoilers, but um, if you're in, in an adoptive family, I, you might appreciate those. Oh, I, it was I'm really glad. neat for me to um, kind of um, imagine what it would be like, um, you know, we loved my brother and love um, present ter- tense, not past tense. Um, my younger brother and sister so much. I can't imagine being their parents and having mm-hmm. had to give them up um, for various reasons. Yeah. And so I really explored, you know, um, the love that a father um, has for his children, um, why that would make him put them in an adoptive family because it's better for them than what he could provide at the time. So, um, anyway. Good. Oh, these all sound so good. I love it. All right. So I have to ask you are writing so much. Do you ever have time to read books? (laughs) Books that you've enjoyed recently or. Oh, audio books. If it weren't for audio books, I would not get to read very much, but I really do, um, down an audio book or two every week at least. Um, Oh, good. Yeah. And let's see, right now I'm reading, um, it's contemporary romance, Christian contemporary romance. Um, it's Provenance by Carla Loriano, um, which is really good. And I just finished, um, a book by Nicole Deese, All That Really Matters, um, which was fantastic. Um, so, and I'm just always listening. I always have an audiobook going. So that is me too. <clears throat> I always am listening because it's laundry. I mean, we have these kids. We have yes. to like, cook and do laundry and stuff. So we might as well be yes. listening to a book. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Keeps, oh, I love that. Keeps well, my brain those, going. those sound like two awesome ones. I have not read either one of those. So those sound like some I great haven't ones. either. They were recommendations. Actually, they might have been recommendations I saw in, in the Avid Reader group. Um, now that I think about it, I know Nicole's was. So. Yeah. That's awesome. There's so many good recs there. Yes. All right. So um, just one more time, go ahead and give us your website and. Yeah. MistyMBeller.com. M for Michelle. So MistyMBeller.com. And then again, the the book we're talking about is Grace on the Mountain Trail. But like she said, you might want to just get the whole series because you're going to be carried away with the characters all the way through. Yeah. There's a book list on the website too. So if you didn't catch any names, um, just check it out there. Yeah, when I looked in Amazon, it had the list in order too. So, yes, you'll be yeah, able yeah. to find it. It'll make it easy. Yeah. Well, thank you, okay. Misty, so much for being here. It's always so fun talking to you. Yes, yeah, it was great to see you again, Tricia. Great to talk with everyone. <laughs>